Hey, hello, welcome. This is Roger Royce with the 10,000 Startups Podcast, where each week we bring you original content on issues of interest to startups on topics of law from industry subject matter experts. And this week, we are going to talk about a, a subject that is like really topical, very current in the news. It's the California Privacy Protection Act and privacy law around artificial intelligence generally. And I have with us today Charlene Liu. She's a member of our, she's a Haines, she's partner at Haynes and Boone, resident in our San Francisco office. And she works a lot with privacy and deep learning, uh, and especially with what's going on with AI. So thanks for being here, Charlene. This is um this is a, a really good topic. And we're doing something a little bit different this week. Normally we bring this content out every Monday, but the law is changing so quickly on this that we're going to go ahead and release this immediately uh, as soon as I can get it uploaded. So again, thanks for being here. Oh, sure. My pleasure. All right. So so let's kind of start with the number one thing here that we're all talking about is this California Privacy Protection Act, if I'm saying it right. Um, uh, what is that? And where did that come from? And why why is now such a big, you know, big time to be concerned about it? Sure, sure. So um, the California Privacy Protection Agency, I, I think they are one of they are one of the very first. They are actually the first state level regulator in terms of the Privacy Act uh, in in this country. And as of last November, they released the first draft about the regulation on AI in terms of uh, privacy protection and uh, AI and or related what they codify as automated decision making. Uh, mechanisms, meaning that if you employ any mechanisms at your product, you're going to uh, that harvest user data, make any decision on behalf of them, and you're subject to the uh, the regulation. This is in response to the Biden administration's executive order, I think that was last September or October-ish, to request that uh, all the regulators need to take a closer look at the massive use of AI and the first draft, which is, in my opinion, is a very careful draft about how business um, should regulate it to protect the privacy of their users that was released in November. Um, as we read the draft, uh, there's a lot of blank left for further discussion, but I think it's a very good start to let people really get into the field thinking about what should the regulator think about and what should business um be more careful or think about their business, shape the reporting procedure in terms of any possible future constraint or mandated regulations upon them if they're using any type of AI technology. Yeah. Okay. Well, you said a mouthful there. <laughs> so let me <laughs> let me take that sorry. apart a little bit. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so you you said these are draft regulations. So this is not yet law, I take it? Correct, correct. So it's it's actually a first draft. It's not complete yet. First draft was released early November. Okay, I see. Do, do we have any idea when we expect it might be final? Uh, I expect maybe the first half of this year because I think it's it's the expectation or the requirement from the EO last year is they want to see something within two, I think it was 270 days from, from last September. So somewhere... I think around me this year, we should see some clear regulation going out. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and you used a term that I don't hear that much in, in AI circles, automated decision-making. <laughs> Is that the same as artificial intelligence? It sounds broader to me. It is broader. It's, you know, it's actually interesting. I think this is not a... I don't consider it as a technical jargon that's usually used in the tech community, aut automated decision making. Yes, it is broad. It can be at everything. And um, I think even before there is artificial intelligence, um, well, again, artificial intelligence alone is a very broad concept as well. So even before the massive use of artificial intelligence, AI, I think uh, back in the days, then people use very... Uh, let's say somewhat rudimentary technology to help user make decisions purely based on your profiling the user, like you click one thing that will lead to another. I think that uh, the regulation have that in mind. Anything that's not coming from a explicit election from the user him or herself 
is considered automated decision making. Okay. Well, why don't we dive into this a little bit? Uh, can you tell me what are the key requirements of these draft regulations that mm -hmm. we expect to be final this year? Sure, sure. Yeah. So the regulation we uh, at it, in its first draft, we see that uh, it has three major requirements for businesses, which are not surprising. I think uh, most of them have already been in use and adopted by a lot of businesses. First is the uh, pre-use notice. That means if you're a website, you're a tech company, uh, you're trying to harvest user data to do something, to do automated decision making, or you are trying to automate decision for on behalf of the user, you need to let the user know. Uh, yeah, so the, I think this someone that is already in use, like when a lot of times when we log onto a website, we receive a receive a pop-up window that says, do you accept the cookies or not? And the second is- well, let, 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 oh, let sure. Make sure I understand that. So you have to let the user know that you're gathering their information or that you're using a machine to do it, automated decision-making? I think that's- both. Both. Okay. Both. Yes. Okay. And that's similar to like cookies. Do you accept cookies? This is like, do you accept, or you know, not even do you accept? It's just notify you that uh, we're gathering information and we're using automated decision making. What's this? What's another requirement? Uh, sorry, just back to cookies. I think the pre-use notice it might get one step further a little bit more is that they require you need to have a description to make sure not to make sure to let the user it, it's a bona fide attempt to make to let the user understand what what does it mean but what are you trying to collect what are you trying to do with it mm -hmm. uh nowadays we do have that notice but a lot of times it may just say that do you accept the cookies or not because for a lot of let's say average user they may not be aware what cookies what what are they what are they going to do Oh, so, yeah, so it's more like the notice needs to be clear, like reasonably clear and understandable to the user. So they know that it is a potential their rights have might be violated. OK, gotcha. Yeah, that's that sounds like an extension of existing right. law. Yeah. OK, so anything else? And the second is tied to the pre-use notice is called the right to opt out. Mm -hmm. So meaning that when you're telling user that we're, this is what we're going to do, uh, you have the right to opt out. You can choose no, no, I don't accept any cookies. I don't accept the, don't keep any of my data and don't use my data to do anything else that I don't agree to do. So that's the right to opt out. Yeah, this is, uh, if taking this second point alone, I, I think it's, it, it is somewhat similar to, to what a lot of websites are doing today. So you can elect, yes, I accept the cookies. No, I don't accept the cookies. Mm -hmm. but um, still uh, deficient in the fact that a lot of people may not even know what, what does that mean by accept or or reject the cookies. So mm -hmm. that, that's what the first draft line out to you. Language, the language of the notice needs to be clear. So p the users know what they're rejecting or what they're accepting. Are they're opting in or opting out. So that, that needs to be in the description. Yeah, that, that's a notice that's designed for people like me. I mean, I always accept cookies, even though I have only a vague idea of what that probably means. <laughs> um, okay, um, so right to opt out. Is there anything else important in here that our clients yeah. know about? Yeah, and the third is, I think it's the, the request to access. Mm -hmm. So the business, if the consumers, if the users, they have a request to access and understand what, have you been collecting about my information? What are you using them for? Um, the business needs to provide that information. I so see. on these parts, yeah, I, I personally feel this might be a little burden, but for the business, but um, it also, I mean, there's still a, a lot of wiggle room on that, like to what extent the business needs to make transparent about how their, the data collected data might be used. Is that even practical? Like practically possible because you collect data, you feed it to, you might use the data in some type of AI technology and the output of the AI technology is gonna be fed to somewhere else that doesn't even, that's not even owned by this particular business. Could this one particular business possibly track the use of 
this one piece of user data they harvested, um, how much transparency is required, and it's whether it's actually technically uh, practical for the business to keep track of that all the time. So these are things that the draft is left a lot of wiggle room. I think they might, did they actually leave in the draft that they would discuss further about the training of AI? What's its implication about data privacy for the next meeting? Um, so we'll, yeah, yeah, I think we're, we're very curious to see how the agency might look into that issue. Anything else in there that's really big? Is there anything about cybersecurity audits, assessments, anything like that? Uh, you mean in the draft? Yeah. The draft doesn't specifically um, put out any like a specific language about cybersecurity, but I think it's the, uh, it wrote into the general discussion about risk, uh, about how the user protect their data um, that's linked out of their own domain. And it's now it's it's stored at a different domain. The use of it that my emission of the privacy that caused some caused the risk. Uh not particularly on um, cybersecurity as a whole, but the, just a general idea of a uh, user, how to protect the integrity of their data. And even enterprise, then they have their own data that's going to be used by another enterprise and that level of privacy and the data security. I think that's generally discussed. How should they follow the general framework right, for the integrity of it? Yeah. And, and I understand uh, there, these are draft regulations, so there's commentary and discussion. How has industry been responding to these rules? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I haven't talked to industry people. Um, because I think it's still very new. It's not law yet, mm -hmm. <laughs> so the so the the response is uh, hasn't been been huge. But I've talked to a few re tech reporters and and law reporters. Then they are curious to see uh, how how do we think and where which direction we want we predict this may go. Because this really is the first draft in the effort of regulating AI. Mm -hmm. And I think bigger question is people are interested in seeing if AI is regulatable mm -hmm. and second, if we should regulate AI. Right. Yeah. So I think the first draft it has been very careful in this aspect. I mean, as California is the, the basically the harbor of right. a lot That's of kind new of a, a national issue with it. Right. Should it be regulated? Are we just kind of, are we stopping startups before they even have a chance to get going by imposing a set of burdensome rules on them? Uh, but before we get into that, uh, mm -hmm. let me just ask, who, who who does this apply to? Because everybody does business in California. If you do business here, do you have to worry about these rules? Uh, I think it does. It does work. Yeah, that's a great question because really um, it's hard to decide, like, are you a California business or not? If I'm not, a lot of business, they're not incorporated in California, but they they have servers here. Is that the definition? They absolutely have consumers here because everybody is going to use your service no matter where they are located. So the, I think the, uh, the, if the, CPPA, they use the, let's say the majority, the, let's say the, what's that called the a reasonable person would believe like the, the impact that reached to California citizens, then yeah, this would apply to a lot of business as long as they run, as long as their service is running on the internet or the cloud. Because they have consumers in California. Exactly, right. And it understand. reached to a lot of California consumers. Right. And understand California defines consumer quite broadly. <laughs> That's right. right. It That's even includes true. employees, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, so what we tell companies is that if you're doing business in California, you just assume California law is going to apply to you because um, it, it's drafted pretty broadly. Any other states? being as uh, proactive as the state of California on this? Uh, we are still watching. I think California definitely jump is the first to jump into the, or respond to the EO and jump into this, uh, uh, I guess, this effort to try to regulate AI. Or another thought that we have is that maybe, because California is the harbor of a lot of new technology, we want to be the first as to not, to set the example, not to over-regulate. Uh, I see that the first draft is very careful. Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to talk to us today. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you said something else. So you said you talked about the Biden administration plan. Right. So, so tell me more about that. Is the federal government getting in on the act as well? 
Well, that's, yeah, that's an interesting question because it, it's definitely <laughs> federal government try to say something, but the executive order, it also doesn't say much. It, it, it gives, it gives some, some guidance, some requirements, basically calling for state level agencies or the, or different types of agencies to react to, um, to the calling, the agencies, uh, sorry, to the AI, the use, the massive use of AI to have further regulations. Um, we will see, but I let, let, let me see. I would be surprised if we really have a federal level, like Congress, would really legislate something specific as the regulation. How should we use regulate AI? I'd be surprised too. We don't even have a federal cybersecurity system in place, you know, which is a lot like not having a fire department, if you ask me. Um, so let me ask you, why in particular should AI companies be concerned about this? Or let's say AI enabled companies, because yeah. this re I'm old. So I remember when the internet first came along and uh, all of a sudden, if you were if you were, you know, parrot food is us, you became parrot food is us dot com. And it feels like that now, like everybody is, oh, we're AI enabled. We're using AI for our solution. Um, so uh, why is that a particular concern, the AI component? Right, right, absolutely. Because the AI, uh, artificial intelligence, it basically, it imply, not imply, it basically pretty much equates to you need to use a lot of data to make your AI work. Where is that data coming from? That's the question that every AI or AI related company will will need to face and because of the current development of AI technology the the tech let's say the technical framework actually changed a lot some companies they employ a lot of proprietary consumer data some do not they come somehow just outsource or offload that task to another upstream or downstream company. But these are all questions that we need to face is, and or even the drafter of the CPP drafter need to face is that, is, is that um, do we discriminate among this ecosystem, like who directly use data, who do not directly use the raw user data, but they purchase service from someone who actually use raw consumer data. Because mm -hmm. down the chain, like how does it impact to everyone on this, ecosystem of automated decision making as different layers of uh, consumer data harvesting and utilization. Okay. Uh, I do feel that that probably is getting into too much details and we don't want the law to be like over-regulating. Yeah, no so, kidding. Yeah, we're interested to see how the CPPA will will address these issues. Okay, so I guess last question for you. What, what should companies be thinking about right now? What should they be doing? Should they be just sitting back and waiting? Should they be getting ready? What are you advising your clients about this? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I mean, uh, I do have a lot of AI clients and uh, some of them are taking heightened measure, um, reviewing their data procedure, make sure that they strictly comply with or existing privacy laws, which is great. And some of them are willing to take the risk purchasing data from commercial data sets and, and do things they need to do. That That's actually a lot of companies are doing that. Because in this area, you know, I cannot advise my clients not to think too much, do whatever you need to do, <laughs> because there will be potential danger down the road as we, as you might want to address in another episode that OpenAI has just been sued. <laughs> massively sued by a lot of content creators um we actually are <laughs> doing that episode uh next week in yeah. fact uh and i'm going to be following up with you when these rules become final right so we'll have another discussion about what actually made it into the rules whether there's this additional stuff maybe about audits um and uh and uh you know, hopefully it won't be too late for companies to respond they'll give us a little bit of time to you know to get into compliance well, I want to thank you for being here today, Charlene. And again, this is Roger Royce, 10,000 Startups. I'm a partner with Haynes Boone in Palo Alto. We're an AMLA 100 law firm. I'm talking to Charlene Liu. She's a partner in our San Francisco office uh, in intellectual property department. She does a lot of work with AI and deep learning. And today we were talking about the, the upcoming, is it California Consumer Privacy Act rules? Did I say it right? California Privacy Protection Agency, yeah. okay. CPPA, yeah. CCPA. All right, thanks, and we'll see you next time.